So you replace your catalytic converter after a PO420 or PO430, but did you really fix it? Go ahead and grab your scan tool. I'm gonna to be using my Launch Pros Elite and verify live data, including mode six, to verify if in fact we fixed it, replacing the catalytic converter. Go ahead and grab your scan tools. Let's take a look. So if you replace the catalytic converter because of a PO420 or PO430 or both, a lot of times you might get the car that comes back with the check engine light on, but you're unsure now what to do from that point. What I'm gonna share with you guys today is how to use live data so this way you can verify if in fact you don't have an underlying problem. I'll give you guys an example. Just yesterday working with my students, we were testing one of our students' cars who had a PO420. When we tested the vehicle, we noticed that not only did it have a PO420, but the vehicle was actually suffering from a lean condition. The moment we added supplemental fuel from a propane rig, the catalytic converter started actually working. So it wasn't lighting off due to a lack of fuel. Remember, catalytic converter needs fuel in order for it to light off and start doing its job. So we're gonna do the same test today. So this way you guys can see how we can verify if the catalytic converter is gonna successfully take care of the 420 or 430 code. Grab your scanners, let's take a look. All right, so on this one, we're gonna to go to local diagnose. We're going to do EOBD and we're going to hit OK. So the scan tool is going to go through its communication protocols, try to select the best communication protocol for this. This is CAN. All right. So then we're going to hit enter. All right. So the first thing we want to check is let's go to freeze frame. And in freeze frame, what we want to select is we want to make sure that we look at the loop status, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we want to verify, does this fuel vehicle have enough fuel to operate? So we want to look at loop status. Then we want to look at Lambda or voltage, a bank sensor, bank one, sensor one, and bank one, sensor two. Oops. And that's it. Then we'll hit OK. We will watch this as a graph, be easier to watch, All right? And then my next step is I am going to give it a wide open throttle acceleration. Let's combine it and see, oh, whoops. All right, ready, here we go. All right, so if you guys notice, the moment that I went open loop, right? Open loop is gonna be here in blue. Okay, what happened to purple? It went up and my O2 sensor went down. So this vehicle actually went rich for both banks, right? So what is this indicating to us? This lets us know that this vehicle had enough fuel for it to do its job, okay? So now the next thing I'm gonna do is we're going to exit out of this, right? So our fuel delivery is good the way it should be. So now the next thing I wanna do is uh, we're going to remove the fuel status because we don't need it, right? And then we want to look at that rear O2. Oops. Well, we could do both. Go there. We'll graph it, and we will combine it. So now I want to raise the RPM to about 2,000. And most importantly, I'm looking at that rear O2, the one in orange. I want to see that O2 staying pretty steady. And right now it's not being steady because I can't keep my foot steady. But if you notice, it's relatively flat. It's not switching like you guys have seen in my previous video. And if you haven't seen that video, uh, check the link up in the corner where you'll be able to access that particular video. Now I'm going to go up to the next RPM level around 3000. And again, notice we're relatively level. So again, that's an indication that the catalytic converter is doing its job. It's oxidizing properly. If I would see that orange one tithering, switching like this, then that would be an indication that that catalytic converter is a goner. All right, so now let's go ahead and back up from this data. We'll back up. So live data right now is showing that the catalytic converter was 
successfully taking care of that PO420 or PO430. The next thing we want to look at is going to be our onboard monitors, which is going to be mode 6, which is right here. And what we want to look for is going to be CAT, which is 21. Now, if we click on catalytic converter, notice how A9, test A9, bank 1 CAT measured 0.13, and the standard is 0.13 to 9.99 with a OK value. So this is letting you know that it ran the test. It passed the self-test for the catalytic converter. It passed that 0.13, which is the minimum standard. Um, this could have been a lot of different things. The system was reanalyzing itself, restabilizing, but it did pass there. It did pass. So we just got to keep an eye on that uh, in the future to see if, in fact, uh, the code doesn't come back. Now, another thing we could do is let's look at the O2 sensors just to verify that they're within spec. Um, so when this system tested, it's milliamps right here, positive. So it was lean when it actually tested itself. Uh, so not, not a biggie because again, we're within our standard range. So that would be acceptable there. Nothing says failed. So nothing catches my attention. Let's go to bank one sensor two. Again, we're above the actual range. So that's letting us know and they're all okay. So everything's good there. All right, so now let's just double check codes, no fault codes. All right, so again, we could confirm that everything is good there and we don't have any diagnostic trouble codes. So it's that simple, guys. Once you replace a catalytic converter, one of the biggest things that most technicians fail at is going back and actually verifying if, in fact, that component fixed the car. So whenever you guys replace a, PO, a catalytic converter for a PO420, PO430, Go ahead and follow it up with these data parameters. This right here is going to help you guys quite a bit. So this way you guys make sure that, in fact, you did fix it and it's not going to be coming back for a PO420. I have seen, especially in my previous video, which I'm going to link somewhere up here, where a lot of people in the comments are saying, hey, I already replaced it, but the code's coming back, right? It's not about, oh, let me go get another cat or anything like that. It's you. How's your fuel delivery? If you don't have enough fuel, remember the cat can't oxidize. A catalytic converter needs fuel for it to light off and use up that oxygen. If it's not using up the oxygen to create uh, carbon dioxide and water, then what's going to end up happening is we're sending that oxygen through the cat through the back. So the computer picks that up as what? A bad cat, PO420, PO430. And again, if you see that rear O2 doing this, switching like that, that's how the computer knows that that, com that catalytic converter is not doing its job. Now, if you want to take it up to another level, you can take the vehicle out on a road test on steady road cruise. And what you're going to notice, you're going to notice that the computer is going to add fuel. It's going to go rich all of a sudden at steady cruise. What's happening there is the computer's adding fuel to test the O2 sensors and the catalytic converter at that time. So it's basically running the monitor. At that point, if the vehicle failed the test, you'll have a pending code that you'll be able to see in mode seven when you get back to the shop or back home if you guys are a DIYer and doing this for yourself. So it's that easy, guys. Make sure that you guys, all you got to do is just follow up the data, look at the data, and you'll be 100% go. The data doesn't lie. Those words came from a good friend, Brandon Steckler. If you guys remember that by analyzing the data, it tells you a whole story. Your job is to put the pieces together. So then this way you can verify what's going on with the vehicle. Speaking of data, YouTube is saying that the majority of you guys that watch all our content don't follow us. So do me a huge favor. Make sure that you guys follow, subscribe, and then also do me a huge favor. Turn on the notification bell so you get a ding every time we drop a new video. This not only helps us help you, but it helps us help the entire industry as a whole. If you guys liked the Launch Elites Pro, make sure you guys check out the link in my bio so this way you can pick up your own Launch Elites Pro. So this way you guys can start doing some of the same work that I did on this vehicle today. And with that, guys, I'd like to thank everybody for being here today. Hopefully you guys picked up some good golden nuggets that you guys can take out to the shop, apply them, use them with any scan tool. It doesn't necessarily have to be the launch. Any scan tool will be able to do this particular test. It's all about understanding what information you're seeing, what picture that data is actually painting, and then you put those pieces together to come up with what you need to do to fix it. If you guys like this video, make sure you guys leave us a comment. If you didn't like it, you can also do the same thing. This is Oscar Gomez from Master Automotive Training. As always, better than the automotive industry, one technician at a time. This starts with you. Thank you guys for being here today. 
I'll see you guys on the next one. Mm-hmm.